Hello and welcome to another edition of Indie Musicians Talking Music. Um, I'm going to start off by saying, uh, I, I'm going to make a disclaimer. Angie and I, we've actually worked on something together, haven't we? Remember we, we have, we did, yes. we did that. We did the Christmas, we, we did the one cover song I think I've done in my life. Well, that's um, right, uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a, a couple of years back, right? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, it probably was, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it was, a first uh, it was right Christmas. I think it was right at the start of COVID. Like yeah, that, I think it like, was, like yeah. The first Christmas after it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we should probably re-release that. It's, it was a fun little I project. So, <laughs> as you probably know, I'm with, with Angie Kusky that rhymes with Husky, as I was I was explained. <laughs> and yeah, Angie, okay. Angie, you've got a new single coming out. Although you've been so yeah. busy, you had a new single coming out, like I think you were saying, every month this year. Um, right, so yeah. so what, what's the latest one about? What's it like? Oh, well, that. the latest one is unashamedly uh, a Bruce Springsteen kind of uh, sound to it because um, I was watching a, a documentary about him and um, he was just doing this song with lots of sha-la-la-la-la sort of thing. And I thought, you know, I love that. That's so catchy. And uh, so I thought if I can just sort of uh, not exactly steal it, but, uh, you know, have something similar in uh, the in election. Yes, yes, that's the word, yeah. Um, and uh, so um, I've got a lovely friend. I've known her for about five years, I suppose. And this latest one is called Power in the Dark. And it's all about uh, friendship and finding your tribe and uh, the uh, the one person that you really click with and you all like the same things and the same food and you believe the same things. And um, so it's really it's dedicated to our friendship and uh, with lots of uh, Brucey style shalalas thrown in. Wow. So, um, so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've got it. I bought it up on my iPad to show you the... Um, oh, cool. Uh, uh, oh, no, bear with. Hang on, I've got to just open the uh, garage band on there. So uh, that's that's the actual uh, <laughs> the song. Um, <laughs> the reflections there. So, so loads and loads so, of different tracks. But, yeah, uh, wonderful. So, so yeah, do you, you you work you work using Garage Band? I do. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we say it differently, don't we? Yeah. That's <laughs> wow. um, but, that, that's yeah, so yeah. Garage right. Band. Right. Yeah, that's English. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so uh, so i uh, all of my songs are recorded on uh garage band um and uh yeah it's just it's just a case of um getting a getting a melody in my head and then because i don't read or write music yeah. and dreadful confession i don't play an instrument um i then have to try and interpret it and think oh well that goes la la so i have to think well what are those notes i wonder you know and then play yeah. about it on the keyboard Whatever, until I find you know a corresponding note so uh, um, it's all a bit uh, you know stressful at the beginning of a song until I've got the basic chords down you know and uh, yeah and but it's a wonderful moment it's really a wonderful moment though when it starts clicking yeah. right and you start, oh yeah you, definitely. you know and you get that little tingle and it's like ah it's so you know and then yeah, you double yeah, down yeah. on that yeah that's yeah, right it's very, yeah it's very similar with me and it's funny because I I use Reaper which is oh, probably yes, a, little, yeah. a little less user friendly. But yes, there's a lot more plugins and stuff. Um, but yeah, I find you you end up with one thing and you probably stick with it because otherwise, I, I just think the learning curve to start over again using another method is almost too exhausting. Yeah. Well, and it takes right. out all the fun, which is doing the music. Yeah, right? at well, least it for does. Me. I mean yeah, I mean, I love Garage Man. It's so easy to use, you know. And uh, um, although there's certain things that you had, you know, I picked up as I went along, um, it's really nice and you know straightforward to use. And um, you know, I don't. I, I used to try and mix and master my own music, and uh, was always told by the powers that be that it wasn't quite, uh, you know. The quality wasn't good enough. Um, so I, I've handed it over to other people now, but. Uh, um, but I did try that for a while, and uh, I use um, something called Adobe Audition, which okay. isn't a fully fledged, yeah, it's not a fully fledged door. It doesn't have its own separate instruments, but it does have all. It works with VSTs, and uh, um, so it's uh, it's got all the the effects that you could possibly want. Um, so there's lots of things I can do once I export it from GarageBand. Um, lots of effects I can put onto the different tracks. 
within that. So uh, that's quite satisfying, you know. But um, mm-hmm. but I always have to hand over the, uh, the final mixer master to somebody else these days because I just thought you should spend days doing it. Only yeah. people say it. Yeah, very good so oh, well what can you do you know but uh, yeah, yeah mastering so. mastering is the the bane i think of everyone the ma- more yeah. even more than the mixing but, yeah well this is it you know I, you know it's strange because you know what i can't get my head around is that you would i would get it sounding uh because I, I just work at the in the initial stages with a pair of headphones you know yeah. to see what it sounds like and it would sound great from the ipad into the headphones um but then you sort of put it over the, the hi-fi or listen to it in the car and you think, oh, that's really muddy and horrible, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's, cra- it's crazy it's crazy like that, isn't it? And it's really you yeah, have to yeah. have all kinds of different monitors. And I found it both ways. Sometimes, too, you're listening to say, oh, it doesn't sound great. And you'll export mm-hmm. it onto an MP3 so you can start listening it on other devices. And it's like it sounds great there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or I, the last one I've been having trouble with. It sounds it sounds great on my monitors. Sounds great in the um, uh, um, in the headphones. Yeah. But I was listening to it because my last test is: can it does? How does it sound through the speakers of my phone? Right. Yes, that's right. Which different. is like <laughs> probably the worst speakers I can find. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and there, it like the whole bottom end's gone. Yes, and and, yeah. and, and there's sort of a, there's a there's sort of symbols, and right. where where they're fine everywhere else. Now they're here and they're dominating the whole sound. And it's like, <laughs> how does this happen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just absolutely crazy. It does drive you mad, doesn't it? It really no, does. I know, but... I know, I know. It, it takes as much time. I find it takes as much time, yeah. if not more time to yes. do the mastering than it does to actually do everything else. Yeah, I, I think you're right. It really does. And uh, because, you know, I don't have, obviously I know a little bit, but, um, you know, I don't know about all these, you know, this frequency must have clashed with that one. And uh, I've no idea how I find out whether it is. And if I do find out whether it is, what to do about it. So, uh, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> I really don't have the first clue. I need to go on a, some sort of course and get a, an engineering degree, I think, before, <laughs> you know, before I can do that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's a quite question time. whether you want to spend the time to do it with the limited yeah. time we have left in our lives, right? Yes, well, this is it. I decided I didn't. So, <laughs> yeah, but I find a good test is always the car as well, because uh, yeah. that's the one thing with it. Uh, I find that, you know, you put it on um, absolutely every device that I own. Uh, sounds great. Put it in the car. And again, it's just too much bass or, you know, and uh, so it's, yeah. you know, yeah. it's very difficult. Yeah, I think nice it was... It I think it was Rick Rubin who always the last mm. test with the song was in the in the car. If he could get it sounding good yeah. in his car, then he knew he was done. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. I mean, I'm in good company then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. He, he made a he made a few good records. So yeah, yeah, yeah a few good records. So you know, it's a good good yeah. enough for me if it's good enough for him, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I just sort of think, you know, life's too short. I just do the bit that I really enjoy doing, and uh, you know, um, and I really enjoy singing these days, although it's not my forte. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, I I when I started doing this, um, I didn't have the first clue, you know, and uh, and I just always thought that I can't sing. So um, I started off. Oh gosh, when was it? Probably. I'm not even sure when, about 2016, I think. Right. Um, fiddling about with Garage Band again and um, finding a vocal effect um, that turned me into a monster. <laughs> but then I found if I turned up the uh, the pitch on the monster, I just start, sounded like a, a man. So I thought, yeah. well, I can do some songs, like some spoken word songs. Um as you know, uh, as a male vocal, and uh, everybody hated it though. So I thought, well, okay, I won't do that anymore. But so then I just got brave and started singing them myself. And uh, um, you know, well, I hope I've got better voice and music gone on. Um, so uh, yeah, it's uh, but you know, and I enjoy the whole process of that really. Just um, and what know, what was what 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 started you off? How how did you know what was the what was the first impetus of it? Did, like have you, had you always wanted to since you were a child or? Yeah, always. Uh, yeah, I'd always when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a you know a pop singer and a pop star and uh, um, 
But, uh, you know, I just thought it's just never going to happen. But I've always been quite good with words, if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I started writing lyrics um, right. back in the early 90s. And um, so given away the grand age that I am. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, and I was just uh, still back then. It was sort of pre internet really so um mm. I, I joined a society called the oh, it sounds very grand the international guild no it's a guild of international singers and songwriters and uh anyway they had a, a well they still have a collaboration register so i used to write my little letter and uh, send it off in the post and say uh, these are my lyrics can you put some music to them and um some people did and you know what have you and uh i've still got some of those recordings oh, wow. and uh yeah and uh, in fact one of them um sadly the guy doesn't make music anymore but uh he was really good you know he put he took my words and uh and made them into sort of uh real sort of pop rock songs you know mm -hmm. and a Jovi, uh sort of Def Leppard kind of style and uh you know i was i was dead up for that but um um so we had a bit of a break and then this is going to sound really like I'm a complete cook, but no, cook, no, um, whatever the word is, flake. But <laughs> I went to have um, my tarot cards read and the guy there, um, this is before I started uh, doing what I'm doing now. And he just said um, that uh, he saw me in the future, um, that my words would reach thousands of people. And he said, and I can see that it's connected way back into your childhood. And uh, so that got me thinking, well, maybe I ought to start doing, you know, not that I take these things really seriously. It was just a bit of fun. But um, maybe I ought to start writing lyrics again, which I did. And, um, uh, yeah, and, you know, it just went on from there, really. and started doing the spoken word stuff, which was universally hated. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, then I just sort of started myself. I well, got my very first iPad. And discover the wonders of, of uh, a garage garage band Music on the ipad no i it was the same for me i uh yeah. you know although I, yeah. I i was i sang in bands for years and then i stopped oh okay and yeah i got me back into it as someone said oh look on the the ipad you can do all this great musical stuff and it's cheap yeah. You know, yes, it's not going to yeah. cost you thousands of dollars to build a studio and spend years and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And it was true. It's for yes, a very few yeah. dollars, especially when you go on the Cyber Monday or whatever, when everything is on sale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you can get all kinds of great stuff for, what, $50, $60. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like, you know, like really yeah. reasonable. What did it cost you to go out and have a good dinner? Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. You know, it was, and it's uh, worth the investment. Yeah, and I, I think what well, we, we, were, we were speaking before, I think COVID also oh, um, yes. played, played a big role in that. That was what kept me going a lot. Yeah, you know, I spent definitely. a lot of time doing it. And, and you know, it's, it's so funny, too, similar to you. You go back to some of the early, early stuff you did, and you looked at it, and yeah. it's like, oh, my God, you know. You're just trying different things, though. You don't know what what is going to yeah. work, what isn't going you know. to work, and some yeah. of it. Some of it. It's it's funny. It's it's like I also I was going through old stuff, and I found an old thing, and um, I'm I'm working on it, and it's going to go on my next album. So you know, this okay. is one of the early yeah. things way back. Yeah. And it's sort of like, yeah. oh, this, one, this one's actually quite good. I like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah. you, you, almost, yeah. you, almost, you almost never know. No, this is it. No, I, I did uh, my very first one that I um, kind of recorded properly uh, is a song called Heartbeat. And um, it's sort of a, a bit of a dancey one. Um, mm -hmm. And but I used to just I didn't have a microphone or anything because I just thought well I can't sing no point you know but uh, yeah. but anyway um so I just used to record all the vocals on the you know on the um, iPad itself so uh, quite how it sounds like it does I have no idea but I suppose there's lots of reverb on it and stuff like that and uh, yeah and lots of me doing effects like doo, doo, like that into the microphone you know and things like that which uh, um, you know it's, it just seems to work and. Uh, no, I don't quite know why, but one of these days I might just get that remastered and done properly because, um, yeah, well, I, I do quite like that one still. <laughs> it was 2015. Yeah. But, wow. um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm plugging away ever since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah.
no, it's uh, no, it's a lot of fun, you know. It's um, I say I'll, I'll never be uh, vision famous from it, I'm sure, but uh, yeah. you know, it's not really why I do it. Although, you know, I suppose the dream is to uh, um, to be recognised. I suppose, you know, I'd like to be um, like Diane Warren, you know, she's a great um, songwriter um, and written so many wonderful songs, you know, throughout her lifetime. And uh, you know, I'd, uh, I'd I'd like to be that really, just sort of in the background writing all these songs, but. Um, yeah, one of these old days, you never know, somebody might uh, yeah. hear something that I've done, you know, but, uh, and decide they want to record well, it. But, um, I think the thing is you, you really just have to keep at it because yeah. the whole idea of, of the overnight sensation, yeah, every that's... single one of those, I've, I've looked and I've, you know, I, I've, I've seen the biographies and whatever. The yeah. overnight sensation, it's all five, 10 years, 15, 20 years that they spend. And then, yeah. and then success will happen. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. That's so the, the whole idea of it's it's that's not how it works. No, you know? no, no. But no, but I think that if you you know what's sure is if you don't do it, nothing will happen. That, yeah, that you, can be, that you can be totally assured of. Mm, oh you yes, know? yeah. You know, you and, and it's, it's funny. It's funny as well when you were talking about getting your tarot, you know, your your tarot cards re read. Yeah, it, it really, it really is interesting because the fact that that was mentioned to you is what yeah. caused it to happen, right? Yes, well, yes, so, this you is know, it, that, you know. that gave you the motivation to think, you know what? Why can't I? What you know? Yeah, but it's yeah, funny that you listen, years and years and years ago, when I was a teenager, I had my my cards read, and this is years before any of this happened. To give you an idea, yeah. of how crazy. and the guy who was doing it said that he could see opera in my life and i at that at that time it was the farthest thing away from music yeah. that i was interested in oh, okay. and literally 20 some odd years later i'm in vienna yeah i moved there my ex-wife lives there i lived there for 10 years yeah oh wow which oh, is amazing. as you know it's probably you know with you know, the, the La Scala, which is what in Milan and, yeah. and the, the, the Opera House in Vienna are probably the two most famous ones in the world. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's and, incredible. And the city, the city, well, uh, Vienna has two opera houses, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's old, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That is. That's, I mean, I suppose mine can be, you know, just explained away because, you know, it was. Well, there is a little it. bit of that, but, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You know? Yeah, indeed. But and it's um, come, listen, it's come to a good end. Yeah. So oh why, yes. You know. Yeah. Why well, it? And it's a good story. Yeah. It's something that should should get on your biography. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. But, yeah. I, uh, I finally I I had to do one because I hate the marketing end of it the most. I don't oh, know about you, but that, that it's like even more of a a chore than the actual. Um, yeah, the mastering yeah. was well, bad enough. <laughs> but then after <laughs> all of that, once you're happy with it to go out, and then yeah. to have to do the marketing for it, and I don't know how you do it if you're releasing a a song every month. Yeah, you know, well, it's just like I end, end up. Annoying, you know? Yeah, I end up annoying everybody because uh, um, I have a a list of um, my trusty, lovely people on Twitter who are kind enough to respond and uh, don't tell me to go away. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I just yeah, I, know some I, uh, I tag them, and uh, which is probably very sort of a uh, you know, not thing you meant to do, but uh, you know, with Twitter, the traffic goes so fast, and I find if yeah. I don't tag people, um, then my posts just get lost, and uh, so, um, yeah, as and as interesting as I am, yes, I don't, <laughs> I don't, you know, get the uh, response that uh, I'd like so you know yeah. I, I just tell people and then it it goes on from there and um but yeah all the Facebook groups and uh everything you know you just um I've it's, quite a listen, it's almost a full it's almost a full-time job yeah well it can be you know well, it, it is see, seeing the number of these promo people that are constantly pestering you there's obviously a yes, number yeah, exactly. a full -time job right <laughs> yeah oh yeah there's so many of them but uh yeah, yeah. it's uh yeah, I have a, a good response. Uh, I started getting a load of messages, um, mm -hmm. you know, from message, message requests from people. Um, yeah. 
they always started off saying, are you artist? And so you know that they've not even looked at his profile. So uh, I, have, I have a stock reply and saying, uh, no, I lumberjack, as you can see from, <laughs> from profile. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> no, I mean, but some of them are so ham-fisted. Yeah, uh, it wasn't I, wild, I just don't know? understand. Like, well, I, I don't understand. I guess it, maybe it's an age thing. And as you get older, you get a little... You know, yeah. you, you you get a little more social finesse to how yes. you deal with people. Yeah. But but there's some, it's just, it's like, have you ever dealt with anyone before in your <laughs> life? You know, how are you telling this? You can't be very successful, right? No, well, exactly. Why would anyone, why would anyone trust you? Yeah, it's, uh, okay. it, 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 but it's, a, it's a weird thing because, you know, like, like with me, I, I finally got down and I wrote a biography, which is okay. one of the things that you're going to start, you know, like for my next record, I'm going to try to take it more seriously and actually submit things to get them played on the radio stations and all of that. Right. Yeah. So that we actually, because I'm sure it's similar to you. There's a circle of people who I know, and we're all listening to one mm -hmm. another's stuff and we're supporting it, but it's how do you break out from that into a yeah, large audience. Right. Yeah, and it is and very that is obviously just going to take work. Yeah, you know, I think it does. You and you can't yeah. get around it. So, no, you know, really. so yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I said, all right, the first step, I'll sit down and I'll do a biography. Yeah. And, and oh. What was funny, though, is I decided, you know what? I'm just going to start making stuff up. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> I'm going to have fun with it. I'm not going to do, you know what I mean? It's not going to be because no one, you know, either, listen, if it's something interesting, then obviously it's something someone can talk about. I mean, it yeah. should be based in reality, but, uh, you know, and, and and if it isn't interesting, guess what? Yeah. They're not going to yeah, talk about it. Yeah, that's it. It's true, isn't it, really? Because, uh, yeah. yeah, you just want to big yourself up and everything, but it just gets boring if you say, well, I did this and then I did that and then I did something else. And, you know, it's it's just... and you know, really sort of earnest and whatever. And, and no one, it, yeah. it's the same story. It's like watching those YouTube videos, the, the, the very yeah. formulaic ones with bands where it's always the same story. Or, yeah. that, or the best one I used to watch, I used to watch them and it was motorcycle gangs, the history of motorcycle gangs. Okay. And it was it was yeah. literally they changed the names and everything yeah. else was identical. Really? <laughs> they all started the same way, they all ended the same way, and the oh, same oh, bad no. thing happened. I know. <laughs> when you watch a few oh, it's just like, wait a second. Yeah. You know? Huh. Oh, it's uh, you know, I but, think but I guess the for the, the formula of them, right? And and yeah, you know, yeah, probably, yeah because so. the people who were producing them, that was the only way they could get it done efficiently was to save on yeah. scripts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess you use all the same stock footage over and over again. Yeah. Or... Uh, now somebody I I think has really um uh got it down well is uh I don't know whether you know a, a musician called Dean Friedman. He's no. um He's from my era. He's uh, oh, yeah. uh, he had um, some hits in the uh, uh, mid seventies, and right. uh, he was he's a, a great artist, singer songwriter, mm -hmm. um, and he also he uses humour a lot, and he's naturally very funny, and um, so he'll send out newsletters and things, and they always make you laugh, you know. And I think if you can do that with people as well, I think that will you know engage people and. Uh, so I've got a, you know, a couple of my songs are um, quite tongue in cheek and uh, uh, sometimes, you know, and um, I think that helps to, to engage yeah. people. But it's breaking out of the, your usual crowd and to, to uh, you know, to go above and beyond. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been lucky enough to be on, uh, have a few songs featured on BBC Upload, um, uh, which, you know, Hey, you know, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it doesn't always take off from there. You know, sometimes you might get a couple of extra views on, on YouTube, but I suppose it's quite a, a specialist show, um, and certainly yeah. in my part of the world, um, you know, you get all sorts of um, submissions, and so you get somebody reciting poetry and somebody reciting part of a play, and uh, yeah. so it's probably not 
your average listener probably won't show, tune in unless they sort of know somebody who's, who's on that show. So, but yeah, getting getting radio play, you know, is yeah, is is, and it's not what it was. No, no, no. This yeah, is it. I think that yeah. there's there's so many more distractions or or competition that yeah. wasn't around when you know when I was younger. No, uh, no. And and it's a completely different different world. Yeah. And, and music yeah. doesn't music doesn't have the same hold it had over my generation at least where no, it was all no. about music and that was really but but yeah. I mean back then it was there were three television stations there was no cable <laughs> there was no satellite TV. Yeah. You know. Yeah, video, that's video, and none of that. So obviously, no. you know. Yeah, no, no this phones, is it you know what I mean it's like I was talking to someone it's like it's like how do you explain to someone that you know you used to meet people and yeah. if they didn't show up well you'd find out why they didn't show up the next time you saw them because <laughs> <That's true, laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. you know because you know you really something called a phone booth right <laughs> yes and yeah. Call them, and then and then the phone would ring and ring and ring and ring because they weren't yeah. at home. <laughs> yeah. Know? It's yeah. Like, oh my god. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you can't even imagine. But uh, and, yeah, and I, think, I think that unfortunately, music is sort of. It, it, I, I would say, especially sort of general pop music. It's interesting. I I ended up interviewing, um, someone last week, who yeah. uh, who is. Well, he I, I knew his brother really well, and they were in a band together, oh. a number of bands together. And yeah. uh, this was going back in the day. And he's kept mm. it up, and he's been quite successful. But the thing is, they're they were always very niche. Right. Um, and they did sort of rockabilly, or the band that I really liked with him, they they did, a lot of it was, uh, was sort of based on Western swing music. I don't okay. know if you're familiar yeah. with it at all. But it's really a yeah. fun style. Yeah, and, and they imagine. were a lot of fun because they 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 had that like it was between rockabilly to that so it's very older sort of the roots music right that a lot of people yeah. are familiar with but there's a big audience for that yes right? yeah and, and like like yeah. the biggest band that they had which was called uh, Ray Kondo and his Hard Rock Goners mm -hmm. they became quite famous and they did there's a there's a I think a big festival in England that they attended in a number of times mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and and then other festivals in Holland and in Belgium and other parts of Europe. And there's yeah. a real but, but the thing is it's almost I are you familiar with that scene at all? I mean the girls uh, are really. with brutal dresses and the guys all they wear the sort of cowboy. Yeah, I and can it's imagine really almost, it's like a almost like a cult type thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, but, but it's, really, it's like they commit themselves to a lifestyle. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's uh, bikers yeah. or or like you know whatever, and, and that's how I guess they keep it going, and they're all interested within that genre. But yes, but of yeah. course, you know, and and they're probably more successful because at least there's an, an ecosystem. Yeah. Whereas yeah. whereas I think the more popular stuff or what would have been more popular mainstream music, there's no real market for it anymore because the mainstream has disappeared. No, well, that's true. You know, I, I think, yeah. um, you know, my my style is pretty unique to me. I think, but uh, yeah. you know, I suppose when I was growing up, it was all the the glam rock, um, uh, you know, um, pop music, and um, you know, it was all about glitter and everything, and just having fun. And uh, um, you know, and so I suppose uh, there was all the dressing up, the flares, and all that malarkey. You know, um, and so I. You know, I'm well, did, did you see? Did you see any of the greats during that period? Because if I had a time um, machine, that would be the one. Like, I would want to be in London in like 1971. Oh, yeah, that would have been like, great. Right at the right at the time when you know the Spiders were were gigging before they yeah, big, yeah. big big. Uh, oh. Roxy Music had just started up, and we're actually playing yes. shows. Yeah. Uh, you know, T Rex was was starting to become really famous. Yeah, 
because that I was the first you. one. T Rex was the first one that really blew up, wasn't it? It was Mark Bowl. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I haven't. Um, I was. Uh, I was actually uh, not often I get to say this these days, but I was too young at the time to. Uh, um, well, hey, to... that's a good. That's a good thing. I I was as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's sort of like you know. Obviously, there, there's musical periods. I, because I mean, the thing is, I'm a big Bowie fan. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the thing that that's astonishing to me is like in that period he was involved with and produced and was behind like four of the biggest albums that came out in that year. Yeah, yeah. Two of yeah, his because yeah. Honky Dory and Ziggy Stardust. He were, yeah. they, he did them back to back. He wasn't happy with Honky Dory, so they went right back into the studio. Right, okay. Uh, and did both those records, but he also did like Lou Reed's Transformer is right oh, around yeah. then, right? Yeah. Because, because he really loved the Velvet Underground and that they'd all yeah. fallen apart. So he, he revived his career. Yeah. He was he was supposedly like a big, big fan of um uh of uh what's his name? Um Mot, Mot the Hoople. Oh yes, yeah. that's right. Yes, he gave he was them. Like a big, he was one of those because that was a big, big band. That was like all the teens yeah. were really into Mott the Hoople, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And and he so he wrote all the young dudes. That's right. And yes. Actually, kept their career because the band was gonna they were gonna lose their record contract and yeah because they could not have they could not get a hit. Yeah, yeah. And no, I remember that. That yeah, yeah, and, and he did that whole record with yeah. them. He produced yeah. it, and and then I think also the other one was uh, the the first solo Iggy Pop record. Oh yes, okay, yeah. yeah, and that's also yeah. around then or the next yeah. year. Yeah, that is you incredible, know? isn't it? Really, no, I mean, it such... is, when you think about it, all like boom, 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 like all exactly at, around the same time in the eighteen months. Yeah, that is incredible, isn't it? I always you feel know, a bit I mean, sorry. When... People what didn't that? live through that era to know exactly what it was like, you know, because uh, um, being an old bird, I know about these things, you know. So, uh, um, you know, and I was, you know, although I was very young at the time, yeah. sort of living through the, those early 70s, it was just magical. It was so much fun, you know, and uh, there's yeah. so much invention going on all the time. And, um, well, you know, and, it, and it, kept, it kept going, too, because by the time I got old enough to go out to the clubs, yeah. then it was punk. And yeah. sort of more, for me, more the post punk, I would have to say. Yeah. Because most people don't like the punk, it started 76 was when Sex Pistols started. Right. Yeah. Most people yeah. think it's some in the 80s, but no, it was it was a lot earlier. It was 75, yeah, 76 when it all started. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I was more yeah. into the post punk, and by, by then I was working in a record store and I was going to see all kinds of shows. Yeah. yeah. Every, every big, sort of big, all of the UK post-punk bands if they came to north yeah. america they'd always stop they did montreal right. and new york and la those were usually the yeah. three for some reason the three cities that that hit and they'd always hit montreal first right so um. it was it was great in that sense that the they were still fresh yes right? before they yeah. sort of got into whatever because most of them was the first time they'd ever been to you know to north america and you know yeah, and it was in a small little club, and it was fun. And half the time, you know, a few times I got to meet people who were in the bands or the managers. And you know, what once you start going, everyone knows you. You know all the bouncers and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, and that's right. Get you yeah. into things, and, you uh -huh. know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had um, a bit of a claim to fame because one of my favorite groups of all time is um, Jethro Tull. I absolutely adore them, and uh, wow. I have done it since I was about fourteen, I think. Okay. Um, and uh, I got, um, I won a radio competition uh, many years ago um, to go and see them at um, Hammersmith Odeon. Right. As it was. And um, to meet them afterwards. And oh, wow. um, so, yeah, that was really exciting, you know. And uh, so um, we got to meet the, um, I think he was the European tour manager mm -hmm. um, and the record guy and what have you. And, uh, so uh, they got me up on stage as well. They had this, uh, their set was um, like a session in a cafe. Right. And 
anyway, they uh, they didn't. Uh, they had a. They wanted me to dress up. They had a waitress outfit, and the idea was that I was going to walk on stage and serve them all a glass of wine, which was uh, really great fun. And then sit at a table with Ian Anderson and uh, um, mm -hmm. you know just chat and what have you. And um, then, uh, but of course, they <laughs> what they didn't take into account was that I'm five, at least at the time, I was five foot six. And I think this outfit was more for somebody that was like three foot seven. So it was just, it was a little bit kind of, oh, okay, they'll be whistling at me then. So just... That might have been the idea. Is that, that's yeah. another thing. Back, back then, it was a little bit more acceptable, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I don't mind. I'm, not, I'm not grateful if somebody whistles at me. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it on. But, uh, right. but yeah, like, the like compliment you said, it is, right? Oh, well, you know, it's just one of those things. But, um, but yeah, so we, you know, got to know the, uh, or recognize the tour manager and um, people like that. And so, uh, and what we didn't realize before was that they used to come out um, into the audience before the gig started and just sort of walk through. Um, and if they saw us, they'd uh, get us back on stage again, you know, just to sit there for a few minutes and what have you. They don't seem to do that much anymore. But, uh, um, but yeah, so it was quite nice for a little while. I felt, felt a little bit famous. <laughs> no, that's, but, that's uh, excellent. So, so what, what, what's your, what's your favorite Jethro Tull record? Um, I like the area, area, um, era even of um, heavy horses and songs from the wood, uh, which was sort of a. Uh, a little bit late, later. Mid to late 70s, yeah. I, yeah. I love all the early stuff too, you know. Um, but I love a really strong melody, and they, they went through a really strong melodic time yeah. then. And so um, I think, yeah, Heavy Horses I, I absolutely adored. And uh, um, and they're probably a, a little bit poppy, those, those albums for some people. But, um, yeah, Songs from the Wood and... Um, uh, you yeah, know, I can't. Even think. I just, no, yeah, I, I, rem I remember it. I, 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 before I got into uh, all of the the sort of more punk post punk, uh, yeah, I was in Montreal, and Montreal was like a real center for uh, progressive rock. Yes, yeah, uh, oh, it was one you. of the big play. You know, like they, like, like they filled Olympic Stadium, which was I don't know eighty or a hundred thousand people with Emerson Lake and Palmer, if you can imagine. Oh wow! Yes, right? yeah. Oh, I, I think they had a big. It was a they, they they made a live concert record of the show, but just to give you an idea, like Emerson Lake, yeah. they were probably more popular there than anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Oh wow! But it's, it's, it's other other bands that people you know, generally like Gentle Giant. Most people have no idea yeah. who Gentle Giant was. It's another British band. Yeah. Uh, very, yeah. very popular in Quebec. Yes, so, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But Jethro, Jethro Tull was as well. I can remember. Yeah. Like, it was more high school for me. Uh, yes, you know. yeah, indeed. But, uh, with, with, yeah, with they, they live with me even now, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, and yeah. I can remember. And then they, I, 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 I liked them less as they got more... I remember uh, songs from the wood, and it was more, it was poppy, but more folky as well. Yes, it's yes. A real sort right. of turn towards pastoral Englishness. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was. Uh, they have had a, a, a big old change of style since, you know, the very early days when they were sort of uh, blues orientated, and uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating how much they've changed. Really, I suppose the lineups have changed so much. Apart from, there's always been Ian Anderson, Martin Barr, you know. But uh, yeah. the well, you know, you know who was in, you know, who was in the band at some at, at one point. Uh, Tony Iommi, and he was, Isn't that uh, yeah, the most he main thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, question that won me the um, the competition to go see. Oh him. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I, I I have trouble wrapping my mind around that. I know right? it's just bizarre, isn't it? It's just yeah, yeah. that is so random. <laughs> but but <laughs> you know what? It, it's a perfect indication of how the music industry works, right? Yeah, like, yeah. At the time well, Jethro Tull, it was obviously Ian Anderson. He was the leader, and he was really the driving force behind the band. Yeah. And he's obviously one of those people like Mark Boland or. Or David yeah. Bowie, I mean yeah. they they wanted to be. Did, did you know David Bowie was uh, was a, a face? Did you know um, he was like a real like mod? 
when he was oh young. no not really no i don't think i did yeah 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 he was he was totally he was uh he was on like he was 13 14 he's really young uh um, yeah he was totally totally mod there's there's actual bbc footage of him being interviewed when he was like really? a teenager yeah and stuff it's just absolutely yeah yeah oh but he was obsessed with being a star yes yeah and he wanted to be a pop star and mark bolin was exactly the same thing yeah Ian yeah. anderson was a similar story like he had bands yeah. and bands and bands and it started off it was yeah it was blues rock because that's what everyone was playing back then right yes yeah that's right yeah you know, or, even, or even with with bowie one of his best records many people don't know is like the man who felt a felt earth that record it's a great record yeah. but it's rock yeah it's, it's really yeah. heavy hard rock right Yes, yeah. yeah. You don't really think about it, associated no. with um, rock, rock, do you, as such? But, no, um, no. And, and it was the same band that ended up mostly becoming the Spiders from Mars and did that the whole yes. thing, you know. Yeah. And, and he yeah. and and he and Mark Bolin were great friends too, right? Yeah, they were. That's right. Yeah, they were like, yeah. Like really, really good friends because of uh, you know his longtime Bowie's longtime uh, producer Tony Visconti. Yeah. Yes, who that's produced, right. Who was the guy who produced all of the, uh, um, uh, all of the T Rex hits? Yes, that's right. I think I've I haven't quite um, got him as a Facebook friend, Tony Visconti, but I think I uh, I followed him because um, I do have a few sort of uh, celebrity Facebook friends, um, and you tend to get one, and then you yeah. Know, well, they, if you ever do. Uh, yeah. He's one of my heroes. He's he's a he's quite a character, and I, I I really think he has not got the respect that is due. No, no, I'll indeed. That, yeah. out, of, out of all of them from that period, for whatever reason, yeah. and it's really yeah. too bad. You know, he's just yeah. one of those. I don't know why it is. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that are a lot more famous. Uh, yes. that didn't do that didn't do half of the stuff he did. Yeah, it is strange, but, isn't it? Just you, know, you know the way well, things. Well, there's a lot like Mick Ronson is the same way. Mick yeah. Ronson, absolutely great guitarist. Yes, like a yeah, truly great guitarist, but he's yeah. not spoken in the same terms as half of them. No, you know? no, Who old, isn't you know? it? And he had a better yeah. sound than most of them. I yeah, mean, some of that stuff, but I, I think the problem was it's just like David Bowie just took up all the air around him. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I don't think anyone, you know what I mean? Everyone yeah. played second billing, right? Yes, yeah, they would do. I remember reading his wife, her, his ex-wife, um, Angie Bowie, her um, autobiography many, many years ago now, and she described him as like having this white light that came from him, you know, and uh, uh, that kind of always struck me as, uh, you know, that... Um, yeah, I can I can see what she meant by that, you know. Yeah. This, this white light that emanated from him. But uh yeah, so uh I'm building up to getting my own version of that, but <laughs> maybe it'll come with my next single, who knows? <laughs> well, so, you, you you'd said you'd said that you wanted to one of your dreams was you wanted to um to actually ha to be in a band. You know, uh, or, or to have yeah. a band. Yeah. Have you have you ever have you ever played live? No, I never have, because, um, well, basically, it would be just me and the iPad up on stage, which would uh, not quite work, but uh, but I think it would be nice to, because, um, you know, I've got a couple of sets of lyrics written, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's uh, I'm at the stage now where I need to transpose them now to the iPad and to get a tune, but if there was a band there, I could just say, well, this is the tune that I have, you know, can you yeah. interpret that? Yeah. Um, it might be a lot easier for one thing and more satisfying, I think, to have a live band and, uh, um, behind you. And uh, But um, who knows, one of these old days. We well, just, uh, listen, there's, there's always, uh, with, with bands, what I found from my experience is that there's always a need for bass and drummers. Yeah. And there's a lot of bands that are looking for female vocalists. Oh, really? Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. you know, compared to male, like, like the, the, the two most common sort of species <laughs> are <laughs> guitar lead guitarists. And singers, yeah. Right. Oh, male okay. singers. Yeah. But female singers, no, it's, uh, you know, 
yeah, you should yeah. you should look at you know start now that now that things are open opening up again. Yeah, uh, you know, start start going and seeing shows, and if you see a band you like, talk to them. You'd be super, you'd yeah. surprising, or you know, I, I don't I don't know how bands get together these days, but it's it's, no. it's it's worth doing. I mean, I that's where I started. Yeah, and for okay. me, it was almost like a, a reversal, in the sense yeah. that. I was in bands. I never played any instruments. I was always the singer, but I'd come in like you with the lyrics and yeah. then, and then would write songs. I'd write songs generally with band members. Yeah. You know, and sometimes yeah. multiple ones. Oh, and okay. I, I, I'm sure that you well, from your experience have the same facility, you write the lyrics and you can yeah. fit them, you know, pretty quickly whether or not lyrics are going to work for a song. Yes, yes. But they, could work, they could work sometimes for multiple songs. Mm, yes, you know, yeah. Because, because the meter of it is just right. Yeah. Uh, you know, or or you 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 have a moment of inspiration or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and it works just as well with musicians. Yes, yeah. It, oh. the, the, it's the same kind of thing, right? And and you know, yeah, and, yeah. Well, what's really what's really fun, and it's probably what I miss the most. Well, playing live is its own thing. Uh, yeah. because you're, it's the there's a greater adrenaline rush from it, right? It's yeah, performing. Imagine, I don't yeah. know if you've ever done any kind of performing, but it's all similar. Not Acting is the same. Talking karaoke. Even, <laughs> well, yeah. even, even karaoke when you nail it. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and, and you can see people are actually, oh, they're surprised. Oh, wow, you can sing. <laughs> you know, yeah, you yeah, can see it. <laughs> and, and you've, got, you've, got, you've got the advantage that most people, let's face it, can't. Yes, so yeah, even, that's it's true. Even, it's elevated even higher. <laughs> but, yeah. But, anyway. uh, but, but what <laughs> I used to that. really enjoy, though, was uh, was the practice as you're developing a song with a band. Yes, when yeah. It starts clicking into place. Yes. And then the band yeah. gets good. And with with the song, then what will happen is it'll, it'll, it'll elevate to another level. Yes, yeah, right? definitely. And, yeah. And then you start getting all that, the energy from a band and, and just also the the synergy that'll happen. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and, and that's the one thing I mi miss doing music the way I, I do it. It's yes, sort of yeah. solitary mm -hmm. thing. That and must be a great thing. Right? Yeah. No, it's, yeah. It, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things if, if what you're interested in in terms of the the creative process and it sounds like from what we're talking about it's yeah. one thing that you should try to do because yeah. it, uh it's a it's it's a worthwhile experience yeah no matter yeah. what comes out of it you know what i mean yeah, but, but the actual doing it is a load of fun yeah yeah i can imagine and then if it works out playing, playing live is the bonus right mm, yeah, yeah definitely yeah i think it's having the confidence because uh um, you know, I'm not fashionable with my music at all, you know, and so I, I think a lot of people are going to think, well, you know, they're just sort of girly songs and, they're, you know, they're not yeah. really yeah. one thing or another. I yeah, think well, that... Expand out. I mean, I, I'm almost thinking I wouldn't mind doing uh, sort of a genre band. Yeah. You know, uh, where, you know, find find something where it's well within my vocal range and do standards. Yes. Sort of like, yeah, like you know what I mean, like yeah, blues yeah. or or what you know what I mean, whatever. Yeah, uh, might find a band and you know do something like that. I think that could be fun too. Yeah, uh, you know, and and then obviously once you have a band in place, then you've got the advantage of you can do other things. Right? I, I know oh, that's it. I just picked out for a minute, <laughs> but. Uh... Oh, I think we've the whole we've creative. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, it look, looks like it. it must must be must be BT. So who, who's your who's your carrier? Because you're on a phone, are you? Or or are you, uh, yes, on the phone. Yeah, it's um. Uh, where who are we? Um, Virgin, we're with. So uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, bl we'll blame Richard Branson then. Definitely yes. <laughs> That'll do then. But, exactly. Uh, call call yeah. him on his island and uh, and complain. <laughs> Yeah, so we need to get over here now. <laughs> so we'll yeah, exactly. Back. Well, you must be somewhere near the coast. You can just you can send them, uh, you know, a yeah, message in a bottle. Yeah. I'll send a courier pigeon or something. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, but it's funny with um, I've got a, a 
another song coming out in uh, August. Mm -hmm. And um, that song just came to me one night when I couldn't sleep and uh, just woke up with this, just, you know, the, these lines in my head and this melody yeah. in my head. And I thought, that must be something that I know already. You know, it must be a song that exists already, but for the life of me, I can't think what it is. So, uh, um, so that's coming out in August now. I finished that one the other day, and uh, oh, wow. but, uh, that's quite often how what, it happens. What's your What's your process when you do that? Do, do, um, you, do you record them on your phone so that you have the melody in yeah. your mind, or do you write it down? I do, or? Yeah. yeah, I tend to. Um, I record the snatch of the melody that I have and the odd words that will pop in. I just sort of record it on my sound recorder on the phone. And then uh, um, then I find I spend the next two hours just writing out the lyrics, you know, sort of three o'clock in the morning or something. And uh, so once I've got the, the melody for the verse and the, and the chorus, you know, generally um, I can figure out that that's the only bit I need to record. So I'll record it very quietly so I don't wake anybody up. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not quite sure. The latest um, I've got one that I'd like to work on. I've um, I heard an ABBA song, would you believe, the other day, and oh, wow. um, I just it's a song that uh, I don't think it was ever a hit in the UK anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's I think it's called Here's to Us, mm -hmm. um, and it's just basically sort of. Um, it's just a, a song that's got a great melody to it. And uh, yeah. so I thought, well, I wonder if I can write my own lyrics kind of to that and then do a different uh, melody for it. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is now I've got the lyrics written, which I'm really pleased with, but um, all I can hear is the other melody. <laughs> so, so I need to come up with a, with a completely separate melody to that one. But uh, um, so that's, that's the latest project that's probably in there. Well, I mean, listen, that might be a case where you you're gonna want to put it aside a little bit. Yeah, I think so. To get, yeah. that, to get the ABBA song out of your mind. Yes, that's the thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So and there's another that, one that, that could be very dangerous. Yeah, it's what it can be because you end up <laughs> plagiarizing people without realizing, without meaning to. But uh, yeah. uh, but I mean, it's listen, yeah. it's bound it's bound to happen, especially with music. Yes, just, yeah. Just well, only there, there's only so much variation, and of that, yeah. there's only so much that sounds right. Yes, that well, that's the thing, isn't it? So, yeah, you know. yeah. It is, it is and I've even heard. I, I mean, I don't know. Have you seen any of those? There's there's videos on YouTube where where someone will go like, a lot oftentimes they'll do it in like country music or whatever. Yeah, and they'll play ten hits, and they're all yeah. the same song. Well, like yes, yeah. Exactly. Same progression of the same chords. Yes, right. yeah. It's the uh, trouble is it's easy to fall into that trap, isn't it? Because yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. I say I don't read music, but I I tend to hover around the same sort of four chords. Mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, C, F, G, and D or A. I think. Yeah, well, um, and they yeah. seem to flow well together, you know. And uh, so I, uh, you know, why so much is is done in those because yeah. I think those are the big pop chords. Although, although yes. I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I tend to write well, compose, because in, as well, I just pick out chords that I've, I've yeah. learned. But yeah. I, I tend to get more fascinated with the the, um, the sharps, like the minor chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find indeed, yeah. they go well together, you know, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Especially like yeah. B sharp. I, I I don't know what I like. I like B sharp for some reason. Oh, right. so I I I I'm going to have to look it up now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I know them more just more from the the finger patterns, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, of course, you've got you know you you go and I I at one point I attempted to learn piano and did a little bit and so I've got some yeah. really rudimentary. Skills. Yes, yeah. But but it's mostly just to get something in my case into MIDI. Yes. So that I can yeah. then start manipulating it, right? And playing with That's it. That's right, yes. And, whatever, yeah. and build whatever basis. And and oftentimes it's more of a feel thing than anything else. Yes, well it and is. At least you have a structure if you're if you're collaborating with someone, it's I think it's a lot more effective than just sort of humming things to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know what great. I mean? Otherwise, yeah, how are you yeah. supposed to express it? unless they're actually yeah. writing the music and you're providing the lyrics as it were. Yeah, it's uh, so, it is tricky. So I think, yeah, I, I I think you said you did some collaborations as well. Yes, I have done, yeah. I think uh, yeah. 
the um, uh, the most famous one of which was uh, uh, with Stefan Oferman, who used to be uh, he was a musician uh, behind Roxette. Um, okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, and he found me on a um, like a, a collaboration website called Songwriter Link, and yeah. uh, I put lyrics up there which he liked, and um, um, so yeah, we've uh, we've been writing songs together, and um, um, so that was very exciting, you know, and uh, um, uh, uh, and yeah, there've been a few, quite a few people um, over the time, and. Um, uh, I was writing with um, as part of Twice Divine for a while, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was that was good fun as well. And um, I was a vocalist on that, um, and that was kind of uh, electronic, kind of dancey mm -hmm. kind of music. Um, and uh, Stephen Foster is uh, uh, astral rock. <laughs> um, he's uh, he asked me to uh, to cover one of his songs, which was a, a great honor, you know. And uh, um, that was um, the Earth, Moon, and Sky. That one was called. Okay. Um, that was out last month, I think. Yeah. And um, uh, gosh, there's so many people. Um, a guy called Bruno Skibold. He uh, asked okay. me to. Um, he he had a vocal um, actually, and uh, he just asked me to do the production on it, which uh, um, which was um, really good to do, and you know, fun to work with his vocal and uh, um, uh, what have you. So, um, uh, but yeah, there's there's been uh, quite a few people throughout the years, and it's just really nice when someone asks you, you know, especially in my position where. You know, I don't have much confidence in my abilities, and so when somebody comes along and uh, you know likes what I do enough for me to yeah. work on you know, one of their songs, it's a real compliment, you know. Um, yeah, yeah no, and, you, you've got a listen. You've got a lovely voice. Oh, thank you. you That's know. very kind of you to say so. Yeah, and, and you, you should you should really uh, you know gain a little bit more self confidence. Yeah, 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 maybe. And yeah. impose yourself on a band, let's say. Yes. <laughs> there, there, no, there are surprisingly few musicians who, who think, most most think just like you. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and half of, I think, being a successful lead singer is having the confidence to do it. Yes, well, that's beyond true, Beyond it? that, it becomes talent and, and also, obviously, uh, voice training and, and all that kind of thing. So yes. I think if you're, if you're going to be playing, you know, hundreds of gigs a year, you better be training your voice. Otherwise, you're not going to be doing it for long. Yeah, you know? yeah, I do find I haven't. I had a few lessons, but um, the uh, dear lady who taught me, she uh, was very much into the old. Uh, she was quite a lot older than me, believe it or not. Mm. She um, uh, was into the uh, uh, the show tunes and um, oh, God. Uh, and what have you. And so, although she taught me how to breathe properly. Um, mm -hmm. There's only so many times that you can sing, uh, I don't know, a spoonful of sugar, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you tend not to. Sort of, I didn't, you know, learn a great yeah. deal apart from the breathing, but at least you know, um, I got that. And so, but when um, I record a song, um, I end up sort of doing about I don't know ten different takes of it. Um, and sometimes I sort of think, well, oh, really annoying. The other day I recorded something um, and I think it was the second take. I thought, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was the one. That was the one that was, you know, actually going to work. But when I played it back, the, uh, the laptop I was using was glitching. And so there's all this sort of this crackling all the way through it. So that was really irritating. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I think if you were to, you know, actually be singing live, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to know how to sing properly um, otherwise because by the end of my 10 takes, my voice is completely gone, you know. <laughs> but um, Yeah. Uh, hey, well, the, the other thing is you, there's uh, – you have to have good monitoring, you, good monitors. You, like, yeah. The biggest danger and the easiest way to blow out your voice is not being able to hear yourself. I think we phrase you. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think we're fine. Yes. Uh, uh, it, you know, and if you can't oh, no, hear yourself, then you're sunk because what you try to do is sing louder and louder and louder. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I and, must admit, I, need, I don't do it properly because um, uh, I just have, <laughs> I just tend to do it with just one earphone in so that I can hear myself inside my head and I can hear yeah. when I'm going off key and what have you. So, uh, um, so I don't, at the moment anyway, have a setup where I can hear myself singing back. 
which really oh, I should, you know, but uh, it's just getting around to doing something about it, really. But uh, um, well, you but, should yeah, just most... uh, get, get yourself get yourself a good microphone. Yeah. Oh, I have. I've got. Um, it's a um, a Studio Projects B One, and uh, okay. it came recommended. There's a friend of mine, husband, is um, a sound engineer on um, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, tele um, television programs yeah. and um, uh, yeah. quite a lot of the really big ones. And yeah. uh, so, you, usually with those, you can plug your headphone into the mic, uh, and, yeah. and then and then control control so you can hear effect if you want in the playback or not. Yeah, I've got the okay. um, uh, what you call it um, sound card, uh, I suppose it's called. Um, that uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly how it's all set up yeah, to be honest. Yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah, it's yeah. Usually sound card or in my case i ended up buying i just got an it's an akg but it's the usb model so oh, okay. i can yeah. i can plug it right into into oh, the laptop good, yeah. yeah it's oh, you don't get it's any quite, it's quite you, you know it's quite useful and I, yeah. I i don't know with me i i like being able to hear my voice with the effects on or at least a little bit yes. of effects on yeah you know, at least yeah, some slap back or something like that yeah uh, so that it, it becomes it's not flat yes yeah no it's a, it must be a whole different experience i think because i've i've always done it just the way that i do it you know and uh yeah, um yeah, yeah. didn't realize until i suppose um I know, a couple of years ago that actually it could be done another way but i've not yet got around to uh sorting that one out because uh it's beyond my you know i don't really yeah. know what i'm doing so, uh, no it, 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 it can be useful sometimes because i find it's yeah. it's funny when I'm doing a vocal sometimes having that you start playing with it yes you know, yeah you, like, you play with the effect and you yeah. push it and I, I've done a couple of songs where it literally the the whole song became about well how can I push this effect that I have on my voice yeah yeah you brilliant know? no it's a lot of fun, which is, which that fun, fun. Stuff. you know yeah yeah definitely. it's what keeps yeah. it fresh because if it's not fresh that then, then it's yeah you know yeah. At, at some point you wonder why you continue doing it right <laughs> well that's true yes but uh yeah no it's uh it is interesting all these you know i love all these effects and everything that you can do you know and uh but um i have to use the you know the plugins um uh as an after effect if you like yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um but yes i was uh i think for this um the latest one that, that that popped into my head it's called and that's that that comes out in august yeah and uh um and i think i just put it um just to see you know to get all the timing right i put it into the uh, uh into garage band and um uh, just put a load of echo on on one of the tracks and um and different effects on other things and uh like a telephone effect as well they've got a really good telephone effect in there and uh um nice. then i think i put one of the um because uh, it's all that uh, the song is a to to and fro between a man and a woman and the man's saying okay. oh come over come on over and it will feel good and she's saying oh, i don't know about that you know and, um and so uh um one of the vocal tracks i sort of put down the pitch so i'm sounding like the like a man saying oh like come man. on over come on over and she's saying, oh, i don't know about that you know so <laughs> so that was quite nice to have a um quite how well that's come out in the mixing i'm not sure but uh but yeah that, that was quite a lot of fun to do you know um but uh yeah you know it's it, it's it's good fun but um i've uh, discovered uh, harmonizing as well in recent years and uh i, I love i mean i don't have a clue where to start with harmonizing to be fair but uh mm -hmm. um i think it worked really well i did a song called little bird which was more <clears throat> kind of acoustic excuse me yeah um, some of the things I do, and uh, um, I managed to get the harmonies on, you know, on that working really well. So that was that was very yeah. satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, do you, do you, yeah. do you double track your vocals? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I tend to have two lead vocals because mm -hmm. um, I find out any pitchiness in one gets kind of overridden by uh, by the second one. So uh, yeah, um, you, you're pro you're probably doing a little bit of harmonizing there as well. Yeah. Because yeah, oftentimes yeah. I'll do the same thing, you know. I, yeah. I like you. I've got the ability. I can sing the same way, time yeah. after time. Once I get it down, 
That's right. And, and yeah. what, what I find myself doing when I'm harmonizing and you've got two or three vocals is I'll, I'll find that I'll push one a little bit higher, lower to fill out the sound. Yes, yeah, that's and it. That's harmonizing, yeah. basically. Yeah, I wish I could do. It. I, you know, I've got uh, Melodyne. I paid for the uh, mm -hmm. um, proper version of it, and uh, yeah, I'm sure there must be a way to do it within that, but I haven't yet uh, discovered how there to do it. Yeah, there, there's some features. I was talking to to someone about it. You can you can simulate it with yeah. one vocal where it'll where you multi-track it and use effects on it to get the same thing yeah but i, I find yeah. that I, I i like doing it live and listening to myself and then you know yeah so i do as well and, and sort of really... fit, like smoothing out parts filling out parts emphasizing yeah. parts and you know yeah there's something then, that as a I don't know how people do it, and I've heard it on. Uh, I know everybody apart from me seems to hate them, but Coldplay. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I know they're a bit like that to some people, but uh, um, <laughs> there's one of their tracks um, <clears throat> that um, is mainly a vocal track on the latest mm. album, and there's a really low harmony line right. um, that goes underneath it. And uh, same again, you know, Ed Sheeran, love him or hate him. Some songs of his I love, and some songs yeah. I hate. The passion but anyway but he quite often uses this really low harmony and i think okay. it must be some sort of electronic wizardry that he's doing and I've, i i would love to find out how to do that but i can't i've googled and i can't find it but uh, you can't find uh, it yeah so, someone yeah. should know throw, throw, yeah. throw it out on twitter someone's got to know yeah yeah so, we should do it Joe Adam or somebody yeah there's got to yeah. say someone will know how it's done yeah, yeah. unless it's just a case that they do sing the song again just really low down which <laughs> yeah. you know not quite well, capable I, of doing i think though that i don't think he's got that much that much range i uh, know i don't think <laughs> <laughs> you know david bowie i'd believe you bowie could probably or <laughs> you know or freddie mercury probably had the range to do it yeah that's it you know? but uh but I'm, not, yeah. I'm not so sure about ed sheeran uh, no, no, indeed, no. I don't, don't think because he's he's really quite. He's got a high pitch, you know. And I say love him or hate him. I, I think he's very clever at what he does. I must admit, yeah. you know. And, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You can't. I, I find you can't scoff at success. No, you have to no. Respect if someone if someone's successful, they're successful for a reason. Well, that's right. You and know? when you, um, I mean, he's not somebody that I I follow, but I I do admire uh, what he's been able to achieve and what he does and if you ever see him singing live you know all the loop pedals that he uses i think that's so clever and uh mm -hmm. you know getting the timing exactly right for all that that must be quite a quite a skill i yeah. should think and um but, yeah well uh, I, listen i've often thought with with certain stuff it'd be a lot of fun to try doing it live to figure yeah, out yeah. with i with yeah. multiple ipads and stuff like that where you could actually yes, that's right. yeah play, play with some of that electron like the looping and stuff Play with it live yeah, like, yeah. there was a lady i uh discovered during lockdown on um she was based in florida although she was uh yeah. she came from south africa originally um and she had the most beautiful voice and she used to use all these loop pedals and everything and um and she would just do something like you know tapping on a table or something and then uh you didn't really know what she was doing and uh, then all of a sudden you know that part become part of the song and she would just sort of build it up and build it up and uh you used to find it fascinating, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah. No, there, there's some great effects. I know I, I, I played around a lot with delays as yes, well. Yes, yeah. I mean, and yeah. delays, you can get some incredible effects with them. Oh, yes, it, yeah. Because absolutely. it does start doubling back on it, and it adds layer upon yeah. layer of sort of complexity without it sounding yeah. out of place. Because it's yes, all, of course, course yeah. you know, yeah. the mathematical. Yeah. Yeah, it is it's fascinating. But uh, one of the um, things that I discovered when I started doing this, uh, um, um, what do you call it, spoken word stuff, mm -hmm. um, was that uh, I couldn't get GarageBand to record uh, my vocal without it also recording all the instruments as well, which but it actually ended up being quite an interesting effect because the song, the first, one of the first songs I did, yeah. um, it ended up uh, the recording of the instruments with me in the background it ended up like a, like a sort of ticking effect and it actually really added to the atmosphere it's quite strange it's probably technically completely sort of atrocious but uh, i was enjoying myself so uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
sorry. Sorry. Uh, I was gonna say I was um at the time I was uh, um, writing lyrics for uh, an American lady who was actually a jazz singer, mm. and um, and she absolutely adored this English accent, and she she just imagined this <laughs> this you know this man that I'd created. She she could just imagine him being this suave English gentleman and what have you. But uh, yes. um, yeah, she absolutely loved it. But uh, I think she was the only one. <laughs> so it was a bit of a shame. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's uh, come a long way since then, I think. But, oh, um, definitely. Yeah. No, and congratulations yeah. to keep just keeping up the volume of work. It's very impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know. yeah, it's, um, so at the moment, I'm a bit of a stalemate because I'm not quite sure what to do with the latest set of lyrics and what have you. But uh, oh, wow. and, uh, oh, hang on, I just can I just let my cat out? She's doing a she's doing oh, a yeah. John's cat. Well, well, if, if you don't, if you if you want to wait, <laughs> I I think we're we're already an hour and ten in. So if you okay. want, I'll just ask you the last question, and I can and we can we can wrap it up if you want. Okay, sure, yeah. Might might okay. be the easiest, and then. Uh, so right. the last question I was asked, what was the first record that you bought? And I know, like like me, you're old enough that you bought a single or an album. What was I the first did, one? Yeah. Well, the first single is very embarrassing because uh, it they was. Are, um, uh, yes. <laughs> it was a movie cheap, cheap by middle of the road. <laughs> oh, hell, it was just <laughs> so bad, so bad. Oh, the shame. <laughs> But the first um, album I bought, a uh, real album, uh, was in fact, it was Ride a White Swan by T-Rex. So that's, that's kind of reclaimed myself a little bit. But uh... You totally reclaimed yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's you it. So... totally reclaimed yourself. <laughs> oh, anyway, anyway thank, thanks, so, thanks so much. No, so thank uh, you. Stay, stay on and we'll say our, say our goodbyes after you've let yeah. your cat uh, uh, in Thanks so much for, yeah. Thanks so much for the the time and uh, good oh, good luck with this much. current release and with the one next month too. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, and thank it you very much real... for asking me. Oh no, no, it was a real pleasure. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. good, it's good that we finally had a chance to get it done. It is, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks so Take much. Care. Bye -bye, Thanks everyone. a lot. Bye. Bye.